Hello everyone, it's Professor Fiore, and in this video, we are going to concern ourselves with the high frequency performance of a couple of different amplifiers. In other words, what's the F2 of something like an inverting voltage amplifier using an op amp? And we're also going to take a look at what's the F2 of a current to voltage transducer. In other words, a current controlled voltage source. So we are going to begin with a little unity gain non-inverting buffer. And the reason I'm putting this up here is to just have a reference point for our op amp. What is the sort of innate speed of the op amp? What's the gain bandwidth product that we expect? So I have a bifed op amp here, a TL071, and we can look at the data for this. You can get an idea what's going on here. What you want to look at two items, the dominant pole, so this is the low frequency corner, in this case it's 15 hertz, and we also want to know what the open loop gain is, in this case it's 200,000. So if you multiply those two numbers together, you get the gain bandwidth product, right? 200,000 times 15 gives you 3 megahertz. Now the precise shape that you're going to get, you know, this will depend on the other poles, the other uh, high frequency breaks, the lag networks in the op amp, how exactly those things are arranged. But basically we know that the F2 of an amplifier, certainly of this kind of amplifier, should be the gain bandwidth product divided by the noise gain, where the noise gain is RF divided by RI plus one. All right, that's the noise gain. In an amplifier like this, that's also the signal gain. Now, RF would be here and RI would be down here. So in this case, RF is zero. RI is essentially infinity. So you get one plus zero, which is one, meaning the upper break on this frequency uh, of, of this amplifier, the upper break frequency should be right around the gain bandwidth product that we just multiplied, right? So this is, like I said, a three, maybe four megahertz device, depending on exactly how it's set up. And the luck of the draw, remember that when you go out and buy these devices, don't expect super high accuracy like on a precision resistor. Don't expect if the spec sheet says this is a five megahertz device, you're gonna get five megahertz within a percentage point or two. You can actually have quite a bit of latitude. I mean, not a factor of two or three, but you can easily see 10% or more, 20%, something on that range when you buy a whole slew of these things. No pun intended. In any case, let's go run a, uh, an AC analysis, a Bode plot on this and see what we get. Okay, so first off, the gain of this amplifier is unities, zero dB, right, which is what we're seeing up here. We're getting, you know, micro dB for an output. So I want to find the three dB down point. And we're right around here whatever you want to call that, okay? So that's getting us, uh, you know, right around four megahertz, all right, for this particular configuration. All right, so that's our, that's our starting point, all right? Now let's move over to our inverting amplifier. So the signal gain for an inverting amplifier is RF over RI with a phase shift. In other words, a negative RF over RI. So in this case, that would be 10K over 10K, which is one, inverting. We expect the output to be an antiphase with the input. The noise gain is still RF over RI plus one. That's always the case for these kinds of amplifiers. So the signal gain is unity in magnitude, but the noise gain is two. So I do not expect this thing to have the same sort of bandwidth I get on my non-inverting series parallel style op amp. This should be less than four megahertz. Okay, how much less? Well, you know, we'll see. It should be around half of that, okay? All right, we're gonna do the same thing. All righty, so there's the zero dB midband gain. So that's good, right? We know that's operating the same way. So again, I wanna find minus three dB. And, you know, where are we here? All right, so I'm getting about 1.7, well, nearly 1.8 megahertz. So about half 
of you know what we determined experimentally in our unity gain buffer right that's still a little bit higher than what the uh, the simple calculation on the data sheet indicated which was three megahertz but that's like i said typical it all depends on the internal variations of the op amp and so forth and in the real world you know you are going to have impacts on you know uh, small capacitances and such on your feedback resistors and and so forth okay so that's good that indicates that yeah we need the noise gain not the signal gain for the computation and we can verify this and we can go a step further right we can uh, turn around and let's say use a different value of ri so let me drop that to 5k so now the signal gain should be negative 2 right 10k over 5k so you know based on the fact that we had 1.78 roughly um, that would indicate an effective f unity of uh somewhere around three and a half 3.6 megahertz something like that so now this has a signal gain of two and a noise gain of three so if i divide that out by three i would expect right using the noise gain dividing by three i would expect uh, an upper break in f2 of maybe a little over a megahertz let's see what happens okay so the signal has gone down as expected all right so this like i said has a gain of a signal gain of two which would be six db and that's exactly what we're seeing so i want to drop down three from there which would put us at three all right and there we go we're looking at uh just about 1.1 megahertz so that's looking pretty good right this is following and this is um you know this is one of the things a lot of people forget they sort of reflexively they just take uh, the gain bandwidth product and they divide it by the gain the gain and they automatically assume it's the signal gain because of course in an in a non-inverting amplifier signal gain and noise gain are the same so it works out but you have to remember that this is a downside on the inverting voltage amplifier is that you're always going to get a little less bandwidth than you are in the same gain configuration same signal gain configuration for a non-inverting amplifier it's just the way it is right it's more noticeable obviously at these low gains you got to gain one two three it's it's obvious you're getting less high gains not so much but here's an interesting question what if we were to go the other way in other words what if i put in a larger ri value than i have for my rf value so we get a fractional gain all right now you might be thinking why would i ever do that right like why would i put a 50k in for ri my gain is going to be 10 over 50. it's going to be one fifth 0.2 well you know there are times when you have a large signal and you want to bring the level down and just using a, a voltage divider is maybe not optimal because this way you can at least have control over the output impedance of this circuit which um you know if you're just using a voltage divider that's going to be highly dependent on the resistors you're using and what you're going to drive for a load and so forth um, so that's a possibility but this is an interesting question nonetheless right what do we wind up with for a bandwidth all right now remember when we started off here with the unity gain we got this value about 1.78 to three digits 1.77 um, megahertz and our unity gain version of this the buffer right the the non-inverting buffer we were looking at roughly four megahertz so where are we going with this one all right well we're going to find out in just a second all right so we do have fractional gain as would be expected all right so that's uh negative 14 right for 0.2 so we want to drop three from that negative 14 which would put us at uh, negative 17 right about there and we're at 3.27 nearly 3.3 megahertz All right so that's greater than what we had for the unity gain version of this All right we had 1.78 for that and now we're looking at 3.3 three nearly 
Okay, not quite full bandwidth, but it seems to be following this equation, right? So what's the noise gain here? It's one plus RF over RI. So in this case, the noise gain is 1.2. So take your, uh, your gain bandwidth, divide it by one, two, and sure, you know, sure enough, you're gonna get a bigger value of F2. Let's put in 100K, right? Just keep on going. This should be even higher. It should be higher than 3.27 meg. Let's find out. All right, so notice gains down at minus 20, which would make sense. We have a gain of 1 tenth now, 10K over 100K, but the noise gain is gonna be 1.1. So we should have a little bit higher of a uh, bandwidth. So we gotta go from minus 20 to minus 23 now. Right around there. Okay. And we're at 3.6 meg. Right. So a little bit wider than what we saw just a moment ago at the 3.27. All right. If you take this to its logical extreme, right, if this RI just grows and grows and grows and grows, then your A noise falls back to one. Granted, you don't really have any voltage gain, but. That's what you're going to be looking at. So that does present a limit. Now, what about the circuit that this is essentially based on? The circuit this is based on is a current controlled voltage source. In other words, a current to voltage transducer, one of these things. All right. So this kind of feedback, this is your basic parallel parallel feedback. All right. Um, we use current to voltage transducer. Right, a current controlled voltage source. We use this typically for something like a digital to analog converter. Those are modeled as output current sources, so we want to turn that into a voltage. So this would be your uh, DA converter out here, basically. And we can turn this into a nice stable voltage regardless of what the load impedance is. All right, so the, the characteristic, the transfer characteristic is essentially RF. That's the trans resistance of 10,000. We're saying from current to voltage, there is a factor of 10,000, right? Just think of Ohm's law, V is equal to I times R. So it's I times 10,000, that's the factor. If you put that in decibels, that's 80 decibels if you, if you think of it that way. Um, but basically, when you go back to your current source, what's the internal impedance of a current source? Well, the ideal internal impedance is infinity. So if that's the case, that's kind of like having an RI out here of infinity. If you were to do a uh, source conversion, right, you take a current source with nearly infinite parallel resistance, you turn that into a voltage source with a nearly infinite series resistance. Let's see what happens with the bandwidth for this one. Boom. All right. So there's the 80, right? That's the 80 dB. That's really just 20 log 10 of the 10,000 ohms. So, you know, we don't really think of that as gain per se. So anyway, there's the 80. Drop 3 to 77. And right around there, 4 megahertz. And just to remind you, right, this was our original uh, buffer that we had, virtually four megahertz, All right? So, you know, we're, we're within our little experimental deviations here, okay? Four megahertz, four megahertz. So you can basically say your current to voltage transducer has a bandwidth, an upper limit, an F2 of whatever the gain bandwidth product of the amplifier is, All right? So it's max bandwidth that you're going to get out of one of these things, All right? Beautiful. You can see an obvious sort of movement from the inverting amplifier towards this current to voltage transducer. All right, don't forget, it's noise gain, and noise gain is always 1 plus RF over RI. In the case of the current to voltage transducer, there is no noise gain as a voltage amplifier, because it's not a voltage amplifier. It's going current to voltage, it's a transducer, right? Current control voltage source is another way to look at it. Um, in which case, what we find is we get full bandwidth, right? The circuit has full bandwidth. So it's a good thing to remember. All right, any questions, leave them in the comments. Otherwise, take care and have a good one. We'll see you next time.